Okay, weirdest animal in Australia. Ooh, that's easy. That's gotta be the platypus, for sure. <laughs> An echidna? <laughs> An echidna? Australia is known for its unique animals, but nothing gets weirder than these puppies. I'm talking about monotremes. So how do we end up with them? I've tracked down echidna expert Jane Fenelon. So I heard that when a British museum employee first saw a platypus, he thought that was a prank. Oh, completely. He apparently actually spent a long time looking for the stitches. He really thought someone had taken like a mole or a weasel and just stitched on a, a duck beak to this animal. He couldn't believe that it was real. And then you can imagine when they found out they laid eggs as well. They didn't believe they laid eggs for a long, long time. That was just another level of weirdness. They just couldn't handle it. They'd never seen anything like it in their lives. Egg laying isn't wildly shocking if you're a reptile or a bird, but monotremes are mammals. So why do they lay eggs? They're a bit of a mishmash of reptiles, mammals, and uh, just what we think the ancient original mammals looked like. We think the original mammals did lay eggs, so that's they just happened to retain that. I always just had an image of the egg being like a chicken egg and something you can crack. The echidna and the platypus eggs are completely round, and they're also more leathery, so it's just more like a reptile egg, and you actually, you can't crack them as such. You have to actually tear them to get them open. It's very bizarre. Baby echidnas weigh less than a gram, so they have some unique methods for getting themselves out. Animals that lay eggs need either an egg tooth to get out of the egg, which, you can, which they use to tear the egg, or they have a little bony process on top of their noses called a caruncle, and which they use to kind of like headbutt the egg to get out that way. The echidnas and platypus are the only species that have both of those. For some reason, they're just like, one of those is not enough to get out of this egg. We need to have both of them. And so we think that's what's happening is they're kind of like headbutting and then tearing with their teeth and just like tearing a hole in this egg and then coming out of it. Echidna hatching is crazy, but how they make their babies is just as odd. Echidnas have four penises. Okay, that'll, that's a showstopper. An echidna penis is quite elaborate as far as penises go. It has four heads. It's like Jurassic Park mixed with like Frankenstein. Like they just kind of mix together all the bits. So instead of having just one head at the end, they have four. And they've been described as rosette glands, almost like little flowers. It sounds prettier than it is, but it's very bizarre when you see it. And close up, they do have like some little spines a little bit as well. It's about seven centimetres long too, so it's quite for the size of the echidna, it's quite long. So I have to ask, why four heads? Particularly when males are competing for females, you do get this evolution of various reproductive structures trying to compete. And one of the ways they can compete is like trying to get these more and more elaborate penises. And so that's why they can alternate between the two sides because that means they can like mate with one female and then immediately turn around and mate with the other female by using the other side. It's one possibility. We tend to think of echidnas as land animals, but in another funny twist, they like to swim. They don't get forced to, but they'll just quite voluntarily go out on the beach, go out into the ocean, go around for a swim and come back in again. They seem to just do it for fun to a certain extent, as well as just to cool down. Like us, they just like going for a swim. As it turns out, there's an evolutionary reason for this seemingly bizarre behaviour. I think this was a little bit of a surprise that platypuses and echidnas have a common ancestor only perhaps 30 or 40 million years ago. And that's estimated from molecular data. So taking long DNA sequences and working out how long ago those DNA sequences split. So they've only evolved to be what we now consider to be echidnas relatively recently. So what makes echidnas such good swimmers? They've got this quite dorsoventrally compressed body form, which is also typically a, a swimming adaptation. They use their humerus to rotate. It makes them basically front wheel drive. And that front wheel drive style locomotion also seems to have evolved from them having swimming ancestors. They use that little kind of beak as a snorkel and uh, it's a curious looking thing, but um, they're quite efficient at it. Definitely, they've got to take the gold medal for Australia's weirdest. They just seem to have so many weird characteristics. Every time you think you've found, you know something about them and like, oh yeah, that makes sense. You find something else weird. So you, I was like, oh, egg laying. And then I'm like, oh, weird penis. 